Good evening. Welcome to the Herndon Town Council, February 12th, public session. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. I'll call the meeting to order and ask that you please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have uh, four sets of minutes up for approval this week. Is there a motion to approve the January 22nd work session minutes? So moved. Second. Discussion on the motion? Nope. All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? Okay. Um, is there a motion to approve the January 23rd town council orientation minutes? So moved. I'll second, second it. Discussion on the motion. Uh, yes, ma'am. I do want to thank the staff and the town manager for the excellent uh, format that they had this year and um, for everyone taking the time to come in and brief us on everything. Thank you very much. It's a I lot agree. of work. Yep. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? Thank you. Uh, next up is uh, the January 29th public hearing minutes. So moved. Um, I believe I heard uh, Ms. Baker and second. Okay. So thank you. Uh, discussion on the motion. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed, that motion carries. And finally, is there a motion to approve the February 5th work session minutes? So moved. I'll second. Discussion on the motion. Um, yes, sir. I was able to listen to the audio, <laughs> so thank you. Uh, no comments, though. Thank you. Any other discussion? OK. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 And any opposed? All right. Thank you very much. All right. Well, we have one presentation this um, evening, and I am thrilled to be um, to be a part of it and welcome our guests who are here to receive it. Um, I'm going to call on Vice Mayor uh, Olam to read the proclamation recognizing African American History Month in the town of Herndon. Madam Vice Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this is a town of Herndon proclamation recognizing African American History Month, February 2019. Each year throughout the month of February, events are planned nationwide honoring the history and impact of our African Americans. African American History Month began as a part of an initiative by writer and educator Dr. Carter Woodson to raise awareness of African American contributions to civilization. The event was first celebrated in 1926 during a week in February that included the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. Since 1976, every American president has proclaimed February as African American History Month. Today, other countries such as Canada and the United Kingdom also divide, devote an entire month to celebrating black history. As the town of Herndon celebrates African American History Month, we honor those who have played a critical role in the creation of our nation through their labor, leadership, patriotism, intellect, artistic endeavors, and we acclaim the sacrifice and strength and accomplishments and the underlying spirit of our nation's great civil rights leaders. These heroes who fought for and protected equal rights include Frederick Douglass, W.E.B. Du Bois, Martin Luther King Jr., Fannie Lou Hammer. Therefore, the mayor and town council of the town of Herndon hereby proclaim that the month of February 2019 as African American History Month in the town of Herndon to emphasize the importance of remembering the contributions and accomplishments of African Americans throughout the history of our nation. Father, the mayor and town council of the town of Herndon, Virginia, hereby remember the strength, courage, and resulting struggles of African Americans who helped build our nation and fathered the call for social justice. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. A discussion on the item. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Um, having grown up in Alabama, I always think of Rosa Parks because the year I was born uh, was uh, the year that 
she decided that she wasn't giving up her seat on the bus after a long, hard day work. And uh, they had asked this lady, who was a seamstress, to get up and give up her seat and go to the back even farther, even though she was sitting in the colored section. And the U.S. Congress even called her the first lady of civil rights. And I just always think of Rosa Parks. I just think she's awesome. And, of course, Harriet Thudman, um, Tubman, who worked so hard for freedom. And after one attempt to free herself and her two brothers, and they decided they were afraid and they wanted to go back, she took off again. And this time she made it but came back, I think it was 13 times, to bring 70 other individuals out of slavery. And it was noted that she actually stayed at Frederick Douglass's home. Uh, so he was on the trail helping people on that um, underground railroad so many years ago. So I'm so glad that the town of Herndon does this and proud that Rosa Parks was from the same state I am, and maybe part of her feistiness is where I get mine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Other uh, other comments, Mr. McKenna. Um, I uh, this is my uh, third hearing of the proclamation, and last year I told a story about who I called Uncle Bernie, who is Bernie Orwell, the keyboardist for Parliament Funkadelic, who is a, a very good friend of mine. Um, but um, this is an important thing because this is a group of individuals who, uh, by ancestry, um, you know, I'm Irish uh, Catholic, but we came over here because of some things that were happening uh, politically and, and moved over here um, by by choice, but it was because our hand was, was forced. This is a situation where an ethnic group um, is in this country uh, by force. And the everything that they've done um, as a as a as a group of people to make this country a better place um, through religion through actions of you know art and intellect and which was stated by uh, council member Olam but I am um, reminded because my dad actually um, became friends with Adam Clayton Powell down in Bimini and um, he saw how people were treated uh, even in the 50s and 60s and told me about uh, those things and was proud of me when, when I was 10 years old. The first presidential um, rally I went to was Jesse Jackson's back in 1984. And um, it's, it's something that's near and dear to me because of where I come from. And um, this is something I hope that we, we keep doing and, and keep remembering. And, and more importantly, just to be good to each other and remember that we're all here for the same reasons to live and breathe free. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, pretty, uh, Mr. Decal. Oh, okay. Um, so a couple Baker. things. Okay. <laughs> she actually did before. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so I think it's, um, I appreciate that we recognize um, African American History Month, that I think it's important to recognize, I know in the proclamation we talk a lot about um, kind of um, history from years ago, but it's still very relevant today, right? That we're making progress, but we certainly, um, it's time to acknowledge that we do still live in a system that is still very biased towards white people in this country. Um, I am on the board of a nonprofit called Service Never Sleeps, and the mission, it has a social justice mission, and we're focused on building and training allies, um, particularly allies of white people for people of color, right? Much like we our uh, focus on working with men as we fight sexism, right? That we need to work together, that it's not on the, um, the group of people that's oppressed to fix everything, right? It's on the folks that are in a, a place of privilege to um, take that responsibility that they have to, to fix that. In, in the spirit of that, I'm also reading a book called White Fragility right now. So it's by Dr. Robin D'Angelo. I highly recommend it, the subtitle of the book is uh, called um, Why It's So Hard to Talk to White People About Racism. Um, so I, again, I strongly recommend it, or just Google Dr. Robin D'Angelo. Um, I can see even, I, I think the concept of this does make people uncomfortable, right? That we, um, putting that emphasis on white people and our responsibility in this. So again, I appreciate that we acknowledge and that we recognize that we still uh, have a long way to go. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. DeCall. I'm very happy that we are actually proclaiming uh, African American History Month 
because African American people as a community has tremendous impact. Their role is monumental in, uh, to build this country, whether it's a you know, civil rights movement, movement or First World War or Second World War. You know, African American people have always, always uh, fought, you know, from the front line, and that's the reason why we are here today. And uh, whether it's an education field, whether it's a art, you go to Hollywood, right? Or, you know, politics, leadership, including the 44th president of the United States, right? So African American people have tremendous and monumental impact and um, work they have done to this country, and I'm, I feel very blessed uh, to be part of this uh, session today that we are proclaiming African American History Month. So thank you and we appreciate uh, you know your work for this country and uh, you know uh, we look forward to celebrating more uh, of uh, Proclamation Month going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Other <coughs> comments? Anyone? Yes. So um, I was born in the 60s. Uh, one of my first memories is uh, in school was watching a movie about Dr. Martin Luther King. He had been assassinated a few years before then. And um, I, it was a very surprising moment for me. I was probably seven or eight and um, lived in a town that was 100% white. And um, that was the beginning of my exposure as I knew it. But in fact, I grew up in a family where my parents were very involved in the civil rights movement in, in Boston in the 1960s. I didn't realize it. And um, uh, there's really not much to say on my behalf, but I want to say that Martin Luther King, his, his speeches and his movements were some of my earliest memories. And so it colors you for the rest of your life. You never forget those powerful words. And a few years ago, a woman named Kit Potter um, was the head of uh, ArtSpace. She was the executive director, and she created a, uh, a moment. Uh, I don't even know what to call it. It was just a, an expression of Dr. Martin Luther King at the Florist um, Methodist Church where they spoke about, they, they spoke all of his words. There were all of his preachings. It was so moving and it reminded me so much of how much I'm privileged and how much I've forgotten and how beautiful a speaker he was, how much his words were spoke to everybody. They really, they, they hit us in a way that speakers don't tend to hit us anymore. They were, they, they made us better people. And I'm, I'm happy that we're, um, that we're honoring, uh, African American history, and I'm happy that we're talking about Dr. Martin Luther King right now because I made us. Um, and um, thank you all for coming out and celebrating that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, first of all, I think this is an absolutely a must do, um, but it has to go beyond just a monthly uh, proclamation or outreach during an election cycle. <clears throat> and I'd like to challenge everyone that is listening to this including my council members, to really think back and if you have an opportunity uh, to really listen and put the ego aside, being you know, told that something might be uh, inappropriate or racist, it's not necessarily an attack, but treat it as an opportunity to listen and to learn. Uh, I was out of town this past week and if the events here in Virginia have taught us anything, is there's a lot to be learned by a lot of people, including those in public office. So I just want to challenge all of us to, you know, let's feel good about this, but this can't be a monthly thing we do once a year or around election time. Outreach, understanding, um, really needs to be a, a full-time effort. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I concur with my colleagues. I, I want you all to know that every single person on this dais wanted to read this proclamation. So the vice mayor went out. Um, I, I'm I'm kind of grateful that it worked out that you're you're here tonight because it is actually February, which is African American History Month. Um, like Sheila, I grew up in Alabama. I grew up in Montgomery, Alabama, um, in the in the thick of it. And um, actually, it was before when my mom was a little girl. My her father worked for the Montgomery bus system during the bus boycott, and 
Um, it really, the stories that, that, that have been shared about that time from that very close up perspective that really impacted my mom's family. It's, it's really something to hear. And I, I didn't really appreciate it as a little kid, but the older I get, I really, I really do. And, um, I certainly concur with my colleague about, um, the, uh, the last couple of weeks in Virginia has definitely shown us that um, there is much work to do, and um, I hope that there's a conversation that started, and we are going to heal together and continue to uphold each other because um, I believe it was Mr. McKenna said we're all here for the same reasons, trying to make it a better place. So uh, we're so glad that you're here. We have uh, the lead pastors from Life Ticket Church, um, Dorian and Leah Baker, who are here to accept the proclamation. So we'd like to invite you forward and anyone that's here with you and the entire dais down for the presentation. And then we'd love to hear from you if you'd like to say a few words. Okay, thank you. I'll take your time. Again, it's an honor, and thank you, Mayor Merkel. Thank you, Town Council, for the invitation. Uh, to be a part of this proclamation and honoring African American History Month for the town of Herndon. And I come tonight, uh, really, last year we were here, I felt like I came as a son of Virginia. And tonight I really feel as I am a son of Herndon, uh, being here now uh, with my family for four years and being a part of the community. I'm so glad to be here. I, I would like to just share, uh, I have, you know, pastors and preachers that can be long-winded, so I promise you I won't. I have just a couple of notes in front of me that I just wanted to um, honor this moment. And on the topic of dates matter, um, there's a um, an article that was written by Barbara Glackus called Remembering Herndon's History in Oak Grove Elementary School. And as I read it, it reminded me how important dates are. In 1869, the Virginia Assembly, Virginia General Assembly authorized the state superintendent and state board of education and Fairfax County started opening public schools soon thereafter. And like many post-Civil War counties at that time, there were two sets of schools, one for white students and one for black students. Later, between 1860 and 1900 in Fairfax County, there were one-room schools that served African-American children around Fairfax County with enrollments as high as 408 students and up to 1,150 students in 1890 in these one-room schools. These schools were commonly referred to as colored or Negro schools. The average school served grades through sixth or seventh grade until students obtained access to high school. Bringing it a little later in time, 1879, the town of Herndon was incorporated. There are several documented indications that a school for black elementary students were located in the Oak Grove area in the 1800s. 
For example, a set of Herndon Town Council minutes from May of 1881 showed that the town council approved an expense of $15.50 for wood that was furnished to the colored school. And the last point, the town council minutes from March of 1882 also showed that the council approved an expense of $15 for Thomas Oden for his services as a teacher at the colored school. The reason I share these dates is because I realize that dates matter. And, and this, this date tonight on, in 2019 will matter. And the minutes will show that this town council and the people of Herndon honored the history and honored the people that have served and fought and worked to allow people like myself to and my family and our church to be in the position that we are today. And as I read this article, it made me think about my grandfather, who is one of my heroes, uh, who was born in 1913. He had only a seventh grade education, but with that seventh grade education as a farmer, he helped families. He, they took in families in their community. And it's because of my grandfather on the seventh grade education back in 1913 being born and because of all the work that he did and many others that have served that I have the opportunity to stand here. I'm humbled, I'm honored. Uh, this is truly not a uh, reward that I'm receiving, but it is an acknowledgement of all the service and the hearts of people that have come before us. So we say thank you on the behalf, myself, my wife, Leah, and Life Ticket Church and the people, the town of Herndon. Thank you. Thank you. Did you know Barbara Glakis is here? Do you know her? Barbara, wave to Dorian. She wrote the article. <laughs> it's a small town. What do you, what do you want? No, we really, truly appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Uh, that brings us to um, our comments portion. Mr. Town Manager, do you have any comments for us? Yes, Madam Mayor. I just wanted just a quick comment on the downtown. As I let you know in the dispatch on Friday, the fourth uh, revision of the site plan is back in staff hands as of late last week. Um, this has been an iterative process. We worked with the Comstock over a period of time to refine the proposal in the site plan, and they've answered our comments moving forward, and it's gone back and forth. And we have the fourth uh, revision in our hands, and it, like I said, we just began and staff review of the fourth revision probably Friday afternoon. So as of Monday morning status meeting, we, I don't have a whole lot to report, but we will talk more about this as we move forward. Thank you. Huh? Great to hear. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McKenna, I'll start with you this time. Uh, sure. Just, just a couple of things. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, Town Attorney uh, Lisa Yates for uh, staying on top of uh, SB 1634 in regards to economic revitalization zones. Um, this allows towns to adopt ordinances to establish economic revitalization zones crossed over uh, to the House last week. Uh, it was assigned to the county, cities, and town subcommittees uh, as expected to be on their agenda. Uh, so thank you for being diligent on that and sending a letter on our behalf because I think this is an important thing in regards to uh, making sure we can move things forward in uh, you know, the downtown area and other areas as well. Uh, and also, I just want to finish up with uh, Happy Valentine's Day, which is coming up. And finally, a quote, uh, our government rests in public opinion. Whoever can change public opinion can change the government practically just so much. Happy birthday, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> thank you. Ms. Friedrichs. Uh, I just have one thing, which is I wanted to thank the HPD, the Her uh, Herndon Police Department, for um, all their work on behalf of my neighborhood last week. They did an amazing job and made us feel very safe and um, taken care of, so we appreciate all their work. Thank you very much. Um, you want to go next? Okay. Um, Mr. Dalagula, go ahead. Oh, great. Um, just uh, wanted to give a quick update since uh, the um, committees aren't recorded. Uh, we held our first PBAC committee meeting. I uh, just wanted to give people an update. Uh, we reviewed and we'll have comments to the pedestrian plan uh, that's still in draft. I think that's going to be a good um, uh, document to actually an organic document going forward to kind of help uh, uh, the environment, the, the town be a pedestrian bike friendly town. Uh, we are going for the uh, bronze in the uh, bike friendly community uh, award. So I've challenged the committee to ask the council and ask the staff and ask the residents, can we get that silver? That might be a stretch. I, I told them I'd hit up the council and the mayor. Can we be satisfied with bronze or can we go with silver? It's a stretch, but- Isn't we'll, there platinum? 
that's I mean, go big or go we, home. Well, yeah, there's there's reality, <laughs> there's budget, and uh, you know, baby steps. Aim high. Um, the uh, the sharing program. I think we need to really look into some of the ordinances that are coming up, as well as the uh, Northern Virginia Parks. Um, they are also considering um, the ordinance around e-bikes. So if you're not familiar with those, uh, there's technically a speed limit on the trails. Uh, these e-bikes, some with throttles, can go well beyond 25, 30 miles an hour. Quite frankly, that's an electric moped. Um, so I, I think a lot of things on the books uh, need to be revisited. Uh, we're certainly going to be looking at that to make it a very safe and uh, accessible environment for us. Right. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Ms. Baker. Great. Um, I just want to remind folks, Next Stop Theater, Wolves is playing. Uh, it started a few days ago. It's through February 24th. It's a short run because it's essentially made up of the cast is teenage girls. Um, it's uh, The play is about teenage girls, basically at soccer practice. So that includes all the language and the topics that uh, teenage girls talk about. But it's supposed to be excellent. I'm taking my almost 14-year-old niece there this weekend when she comes to visit from New York. Um, also, speaking of Next Stop, they just announced that they're going to do Frozen Junior. So you might know Frozen is on Broadway right now. And so they have auditions for any student who's going to be 7th to 12th grade starting in the fall, if that's their age starting in the fall. Um, they have auditions coming up March 3rd and 4th. So check that out if you have an aspiring actor or actress who wants to be in Frozen Junior. And then the play will run June 26th to the 29th. And finally, I just want to remind folks um, about Herndon High School Band going to Normandy this year to commemorate the 75th anniversary of D-Day. Um, I know I've mentioned this before. I haven't mentioned it lately. So just wanted to give you a status update on um, there are, we are organizing shadow groups. Basically, um, myself and another woman, Margaret, are um, heading up the folks that want to go to, sort of want to tag along with the band and be part of it um, without any chaperone responsibilities. Uh, so that's, um, so we're part of the shadow group. There's actually a hundred of us now that are part of this shadow group between veterans and uh, band parents, band families, or community folks. So I mention this just because if anyone is interested, June 5th to June 11th, um, in tagging along with us, um, please let me know. There is still room until the historic programs cuts us off. If you're interested, let me know, and I'll get you signed up, and uh, we'll get your deposit, and we'll, uh, we'll get you on the list. Um, you may know that the USS Herndon um, was one of the first ships um, that that went to Normandy that day on D-Day. And um, so Margaret has reached out. So, And they were essentially named after the same person, right? Our town was named after Commander Herndon, and that ship is named after Naval Captain Commander Herndon. And so, um, although no direct connection with the town, but of course we both have the same name. So Margaret has taken it upon herself to reach out to all the families of the men that were on that ship. She's, she's been able to contact almost every one of those families, including, I think, three men who are still alive. And one of them, James Clermont, is going with us to Normandy. He's going to be 94 years old when he joins us in June, so I'm super excited about that. Um, and other vets and their families will be, will be on this trip. So it's going to be a really special, uh, poignant, once-in-a-lifetime um, trip that I'm, I'm thrilled about, and I'm thrilled that our band students um, get to be part of this, which also brings me to, if you would like to help them, you can buy hats at Jimmy's. I'm sorry I forgot to bring mine. I went to bring mine. It says USS Herndon. So only 20 bucks. It's a red baseball cap. Um, buy them at Jimmy's. So that's really easy. Most of the profits go to, they didn't cost much to make, so most of the profits go to the band or reach out to the band, um, the band booster club if you want to make a donation, particularly from businesses or just individuals. We would welcome that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. DeCall. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, I do have few information uh, for public benefit or public interest. Uh, first thing is there is International Meditation Day going on. Uh, International Meditation Day, actually proclamation is going on on Waterford at Springfield on Saturday the 16th. And they have invited most of, uh, you know, the legislators from the Northern Virginia and especially, uh, you know, we have to deal with many things, right? Sometimes conflict. So having a great mental health and spiritual health is very important. So we cannot deny the importance of 
uh, meditation. So if anybody wants to join, I'm going there. So you can certainly join me on that proclamation of International Meditation Day. Uh, second thing is I just received an email, so I just wanted to share with everybody, uh, again, for public interest. Dr. Finley's Family Eye Care is doing some Mission for Vision charity. So on March 17th from 9 to 12.30, they are doing some free eye checkup and eyeglasses for kids and free eye checkup for adults. But again, I think the appointment is limited, maybe 30, so you might want to you know, call them and schedule an appointment. Another one is... If anybody is planning to open a business, but you don't know where to start from, right? A lot of people go through that problem, right? So um, Fairfax County Economic Development Authority, in partnership with Virginia Department of Small Business and Supplier Diversity and Community Business Partnership and U.S. Small Business Administration, SBA, they're organizing a monthly workshop at Vienna, Virginia, and that will help you for startup basics, for example, licenses, permits, you know, workforce services, training requirement, and anything. So if you are planning to open any business, but you don't know where to start from, this is for all the entrepreneurs. There is free information going on uh, on Tuesday, March 5, 2019, from 7.30 a.m. to 10.30. So if you need more information, you can always reach out to me, and I'll, I'll provide the details. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Madam Vice Mayor. Yeah, just uh, follow up. Um, Dr. Finley is in Rotary with me, and Cornerstone is the one co that got with him and coordinated these free appointments. So you can call the contact at Cornerstone, Vera Garcia, or Verna Garcia, at 703 429 5000. There are only 30 appointments, and the children will also receive free glasses, the adults just a free exam. So take advantage of that, or if you have uh, friends or you know, folks in Herndon, March 17th, Sunday from 9 to 1230. And you can call myself or I'm sure my counselor colleague, and we can give you that number again. And I'm looking forward to the March 2nd, Saturday, Herndon Roundtable from 9 to 11. That's where um, council members that are available will be here in the building next door. And we'll be here to answer any of your questions or just get together and chat and see what your concerns are about the town. Looking forward to that. And... We did get lots of comments um, on parking, supporting the high school band going on their trip, which we did support going to Hawaii several years ago when the band went to Hawaii. Um, history of Jambrew and the South Eldon plan. And also, I concur with my colleague about the Sherrods. I'm seeing them everywhere in Northern Virginia, and we've got Metro coming. It really would be nice, especially since we want to be multimodal, to get those sherrods all over the roads where we know people are sharing the road. It does make it safer because the people in the cars go, oh, wow, we are supposed to share the road with those folks. Wherever it's happened in <coughs> other parts of Virginia, they have noticed uh, bikers, bicyclists, not Harley bikers, <laughs> people on their bicycles have noticed that the people in the cars get a little more polite when they realize, oh, they really can be here. So um, look forward to seeing you make progress on that. I know I was trying, and things take a long time in a, in a municipality. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to remind um, everyone that Monday is President's Day and um, the town offices will be closed and you can check the town's website, herndon-va.gov, for information on uh, refuse pickup and the community center and golf course hours. And also, one week from today uh, is... Uh, February 19th, and there is a special election to fill the seat vacated by um, Delegate Jennifer Boisco when she moved over to the State Senate. Um, it, it, the polls are open 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. It's at your regular polling place, so make sure you go. I think there are three candidates running. And there's also um, absentee uh, voting available in person on Saturday at the Herndon Fortnightly Library right here in downtown. So if you're not able to vote on Tuesday, uh, make yourself available for that. 
Um, this is the uh, portion of the agenda for comments from the audience. Uh, this is when you can come forward and speak on any item that's not listed as one of our two public hearings. You have up to three minutes. State your name and address for the record. And when the red light comes on, please wrap up. Who would like to come forward? Yes, sir. Uh, Steve Mitchell, 1291 Monroe Street. I'm here to uh, tonight to ask the council to, uh, first off, um, I was a little shocked and surprised by a ruling of the BZA a little over two weeks ago. And I do know that the council had a uh, executive work session or, or whatever we want to call it uh, for legal matters. Don't know if this was discussed at that point in time or not. But I am here to ask the council, well, first let me go through a couple of things. Um, under the standards of for appeal processes, apparently on our Board of Zoning Appeals, I, I would caution the council that we I think we need some education because this is a semi-judicial legislative board and a review standards for appeal are a decision or determination by the zoning administrator shall not be reversed or modified unless there is evidence in the record that the decision or determination is not correct based on the relevant procedures and review standards of, in the chapter. The Board of Council shall consider the purpose of intent of any applicable provisions of this chapter and other re relevant ordinances, laws, regulations in making that decision. I think we've seen some issues in the past that this is not necessarily being uh, performed by the, uh, by the current board. Uh, I'll just make that statement. The, um, I think by the, what has happened is the board instituted their own personal feelings without understanding their true legislative authority and what they're supposed to be doing. Um, they have circumvented, they, I mean, the decision has circumvented protecting the public, health, safety, welfare, property values of the community. It's, a, it's taken the fire marshal for occupancy loads out of the picture. It's taken your building official who, who, who has to do with, deal with ADA standards and, and all those types of things, health, safety, welfare. Uh, it's, it is a commercial operation. I don't care if it's volunteer or not. Um, it, it has also circumvented the homeowners association. And if I recall, that was a proffered zoning. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's impacted the proffered zoning of that particular townhouse project or not. I would request that this council direct and, and under the uh, Satoria to review a board decision. I'll read any review of a board. Well, first off, any person or persons jointly or severely aggrieved by any decision of the Board of Zoning Appeals or any aggrieved taxpayer or any officer, department, board of bureau of the locality may file with the clerk of the circuit court of the county or citizen petition uh, decision of the Board of Zoning Appeals. In other words, anybody in this town has, is an aggrieved person can appeal this decision. I'm asking this council to proceed with that. Uh, you only have 30 days. I would like to know prior to the 30 days what is going to go on. And I'll finish up by saying any review of the decision of the board shall not be considered an action against the board and the board shall not be a party of the proceedings. It's a misnomer that we're suing our Board of Zoning Appeals. We are not suing our Board of Zoning Appeals. We are trying to set the record straight so that we can proceed forward in a normal course of business to see if this is an activity that we really want to be enthralled in it within a residential community so I would Thank ask you. that this council please inform the public prior to your date if you intend to file actions or not so the public can protect itself thank you sir thank you. is there anyone else who would like to come forward yes sir How are you doing? hi there are well, you... you kind of restricted me a little bit but that's fine I got a couple other items I'd like to okay. uh, deal with uh, my name is Walt Shorter. I'm the president of the Four Seasons HOA. I live over in uh, Elton, um, um, Early Fall Court. Um, I would like to, and I know I'm probably stepping a little across, I do want to compliment the effort um, with the compensation, um, comprehensive planning as far as the uh, <coughs> South Elton Street. What I saw in your work session with the presentation that Dana gave last Friday, um, sure, and you'll have an opportunity to come forward and speak on that in the public hearing if you want to take your whole three minutes at that time oh, okay. to address it. Awesome. Yeah, this is awesome. for a, a, okay. additional items other than the public hearing. Um, sorry, I, I wasn't clear. I do want to share one thing. I'm, I'm sorry the pastor left um, with the Black History Month. 
Um, I would like to, and if you all have heard of this book, um, I think you get the same influence. In my teenage years, I was going to school in high, uh, Fairfax, and we were required to read a book called Black Like Me. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with that book, but it changed my whole perspective. I came from a background where my mom was German, um, and she had no um, knowledge of African Americans. And the books that they had there, even in Europe, really was an uh, eye-opener. But um, it changed my perspective. It really did. Um, let me just address a concern that I have um, in reference to the whole whole concept of the plan. I'm reading now that the connector is going to be having a, a meeting here in a couple of weeks, planning on more bus routes. Um, and you talked, um, these are, I think you talked about sidewalks and safety. Um, a real concern, um, it's been decades of a concern, um, and I talked to, to Dane a little bit about it, uh, is that during the snow season, we have a lot of foot traffic, and a lot of that foot traffic not only comes from our community, and I'm talking four seasons specific, but also from the parcher side. And when you're driving down the road and the roads haven't been plowed or the sidewalks are so high from ice, your pedestrians end up going on the road, which is a very hazardous environment. Um, I mentioned to Dana, um, I have a contractor who does my snow plowing who would probably it's got the equipment, do the sidewalk. We, you know, I'm not talking about going all the way around Herndon Parkway, but if we're, we're actually developing this area here, I would like some serious consideration as to the town looking into when we do have snow removal. I know it's not going to be top priority for the road, the road is first, but we have contractors out there, I think, to be more than willing to bring equipment that would actually move the stuff off the sidewalk, at least from the Four Seasons side, uh, over by Alabama, where most of your foot traffic's at. Um, I just really highly urge that, um, that you all look into that. Um, and I think I'll leave it at that, quite honestly. That's really my biggest concern right now with your big plan. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Um, who else would like to come forward? I saw another hand. Mr. Downer. I'm Richard Downer. I live at uh, 815 Branch Drive number 308 and I was very pleased to hear the town manager talk about the Comstock deal. That is very important to me and to a lot of people in this downtown area and I think hopefully <coughs> this would be just the start of a regular presentation by the town manager or someone from the staff to see where we are. I think we've been a little too close to the vest with uh, the status. Uh, and I know for a fact that, well, anyway. Second, we have a bus get together with Fairfax County at the Senior Center. I believe it's this Saturday. I didn't, I walked out without my notes. Uh, but they're looking for input. And just keep in mind, <clears throat> routes 120, uh, I'm sorry, 921 and 922 are collector bus routes specifically for the town of Herndon to run from the metro stop around El uh, to Eldon Street, around Herndon Parkway to Eldon Street, and then Eldon Street uh, on around to Worldgate Drive and back. Uh, this is very important. I, I, if we're going to keep the downtown alive, we need to be able to get in and out, and, and people uh, do that very quickly. And those two routes have been lob I've, I've lobbied personally for them very, for a long time, and the mayor and I have uh, brought this up. So uh, I hope that Joe will take an opportunity to do the survey, uh, although you know, the surveys are always after the fact, so to speak. Uh, you know, I, you, you don't ride the bus now, but if it was there, you would, you know. Uh, and so that we're going to go through a big, big change when the Metro comes, and we've got to be ready for it, and the Comstock deal is part of the <coughs> deal, and thank you for uh, that presentation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, is there anyone else who would like to come forward and speak on any item that is not one of our public hearing items? Anyone? Okay. 
Thank you very much. That does bring us to our first public hearing, which is Resolution 19G22, to consider the adoption of the Comprehensive Plan Amendment um, 1801, the South Eldon Area Plan. Um, I'll open the public hearing. We have received several count or comments from the public, and they've been entered into the record, and I will recognize Dana Heiberg for the staff report. Thank you, Madam Mayor. See, before I start, I was told to mention uh, the meeting on Fairfax Connector is Tuesday, February 19th at 6 p.m. at the Senior Center. So I think okay. that's a Thank you. in there. All right. Uh, the South Eldon uh, area plan is before you. Once again, we had... Um, Good discussion at the work session. Um, this is an amendment to the comprehensive plan. It creates future development policy for a specific area. And the comprehensive plan is uh, mandated by the state. And uh, the Virginia tells us that the governing body shall adopt the comprehensive plan for the territory under its jurisdiction. And the comprehensive plan is general in nature, and it guides land use decisions. The study area we're looking at is um, familiar, of course. And um, broadly speaking, we have the South Eldon Corridor as it relates to um, the town as a whole on this map, as well as uh, you can see it's in, in some proximity to uh, two of the metro rail stations that are coming. Um, it's not within a half mile, but it is uh, close to the one mile radius from uh, the, both the uh, Route 28 uh, or Innovation Station as well as the Herndon Metro Rail Station. This is a look at the plan area a little bit more in detail, and that would be Sterling Road to the north with um, World Gate uh, down at the south end. Um, and we have a uh, depiction of some some of the land uses that I think you all are familiar with, including uh, office office uses to the uh, to the southwest. We have residential in a couple of locations in the yellow, and a lot of retail along the corridor in the red. Also, some service um, uses. We have a, a large sort of quasi public use in the center which is the Verizon site, uh, a large uh, switching facility. Uh, again, existing land uses, a little bit more detail, a little bit of uh, zooming in here with the important intersections and um, some of those uses that I just mentioned. So a quick overview of the process to date. Um, it's been a pretty intensive process, as, as we have done with uh, our, our plan amendments uh, for, a, I believe, the last 10 years or so here at the town. We try to really engage the, the citizens and provide a number of opportunities um, for input, and uh, both at the early stages and as we move along and as we get farther down the road towards planning commission and town council consideration. Um, so I'm not going to call out all these dates, but uh, that gives you the the idea. We did have five public hearings at the commission level with that uh, recommendation coming to you uh, at their December um, public hearing. A um, little excerpt from the vision statement to give you the overview. It's... Um, and the vision of a vibrant mixed-use area with diversity of housing choices as well as attractive commercial uses serving nearby residential areas. It's a pedestrian-friendly built environment with a variety of multimodal options. Um, and a quick overview on the, some of the goals um, listed out here to uh, do a number of key things that... Uh, we want to achieve with this plan over the long term, and it does include uh, 
preserving and protecting the existing neighborhoods and also uh, st strengthening transit and providing and protecting the diversity of housing. We want, want to incorporate sustainable design as well. So we saw some opportunities. We have aging retail centers. We have the potential for future mixed use. We have quite a bit of existing transit service in the corridor. Great neighborhoods nearby. We're close to parks. And, um, and there's a healthy volume of, of uh, traffic. And, and also uh, we have constraints. We're look, looking at also, of course, traffic, looking at the adjacent residential as a constraint because we want to be sensitive to their environment. Um, water and sewer is always an important constraint. We're looking at the ability of the infrastructure to support uh, our long-term plans, and we continually do that through, through our recent planning efforts. And of course, we have private ownership, so ultimately the, the plan is dependent on, on the owners that would sort of bring forth and implement the plan, if you will. And the size and shape of the parcels is always key. We, we have a number of really large parcels with good opportunity, but then we also have um, several uh, quite small parcels where you know, it would be a challenge unless you could put a number of parcels together. So getting to the core policies uh, recommended in the plan, we have uh, five tiers. And um, so the first tier is called North End Transitional. Um, it's where we have uh, some existing uh, office as well as multifamily. Uh, the policy is adaptive, but it's really not incentivizing uh, redevelopment to any great extent. Um, the basis is that it is the most constrained intersection there at Sterling Road and uh, Eldon Street, where Locust and Sterling come together at Eldon. Uh, uh, we do have uh, well-positioned multifamily units that are affordable in place, um, and it is adjacent to our, our uh, Heritage District uh, over on the Extended Stay Hotel area, uh, which would be the... Uh, see what would that be the northeast uh, edge there and that, and that hotel is a relatively new vintage compared to many uh, other properties in the corridor so tier two we call this transitional urban residential um, it is existing office use that is um, it's very dated um, it has vacancies um, in this current uh, environment of the Dulles Corridor with the emphasis on mixed use uh, is it's not a viable um, type of the freestanding low-rise uh, office uses are, are no longer viable the, the office users and, and tenants want to be in the mixed use environments obviously um, so the policy recommended in the plan is to make this adaptive uh, permits a change to residential and and primarily uh, a th form being townhouse, also two over two is a possibility, which is uh, two levels of townhouse over another two level town townhouse. Um, tier three, this is um, again adaptive, but we're really not putting the uh, emphasis on major incentives to, uh, for, for redevelopment. We do have the smaller lots here. Um, we also have the Verizon property, which we've met with Verizon. We've talked with them. They have plans to retain this facility in this location for as long as they can possibly foresee. It's a critical piece of infrastructure, both for the town and for the areas around it. Um, so we're just looking at the, the ability of these properties to kind of upgrade to, to serve uh, what would be redeveloped on some of the other properties and to provide a customer base for where those properties would provide a customer base to enliven some of the retail here. Tier 4. Um, tier 4 is where we're really looking at um, 
more transformational redevelopment, um, office retail restaurant um, is existing, but we're looking at transformational uh, redevelopment with significant uh, multifamily, 24 units per acre if adjacent to existing single-family residential, 30 units per acre for, if abutting commercial or multifamily. Um, so it's kind of a gateway concept. Um, you um, you certainly have the the parcel size and configuration and so forth to support this type of concept. The final is tier five, and this is um, again really incentivizing redevelopment. Um, Tier 5 is, was the Eldon Street Marketplace property for many years. It's now changed hands. Um, so we're, we're uh, putting forth a policy of transformative redevelopment, up to 45 units per acre multifamily. With, you would have retail on the ground floor. Um, you have a positive location in many respects. Good access to Hernan Parkway as well as Eldon and so forth. Um, so back out, zooming out to sort of wrap up the presentation, zooming out to the, the more general, from those specific tiers to the more general. Again, this is the existing land use map of the comprehensive plan, and you see the business corridor in the pink is a predominant land use that's a very static, uh, low density, suburban orientation, um, and then we have we do already. We have a couple of properties that are adaptive, uh, and then we have the office, parks, and flexible space property that uh, we had mentioned. That the property in question is is uh, lacks of viability, and um, at this time, so that's uh, the existing plan. And so now you can compare that to this slide, which is the proposed um, change to the the um, comprehensive plan land use map and we're, we're simply at this uh, level changing the the primary uh, designation there to adaptive and then with the two properties we would have the adaptive residential remember for a number of years i think since 2008 we've had two adaptive area categories in the comprehensive plan one is adaptive residential which means we're encouraging redevelopment, but only to some form of residential use. And then the other category is adaptive, which is a much more flexible. You know, we're encouraging change. We're open to a variety of ideas. Um, so you have the adopting resolution, including those comprehensive plan map changes, um, text changes, including those full descriptions. Um, as well as the vision and goals. I'd like to just conclude with the future steps, um, assuming that you would um, adopt the plan. Uh, the important follow-up, as we have with any plan we adapt, um, adopt, we need to look at drafting and adoption of zoning text amendments. So we need to... Um, sort of implement the plan, if you will, provide that zoning, those zoning districts that uh, would allow the developers to um, apply for zoning map amendments uh, consistent with the plan and with the land use designations and the tiers that I described. Um, from that, we often get the question, you know, what's the next step? Well, obviously, from that point, the applicant can submit a zoning map amendment that goes through the public hearing process. And then from that point, it's administrative review for site plans. Uh, we do have public hearings at the architectural review board stage. And of course, building permits uh, are just administrative review. So that's kind of the process in a nutshell towards, um, you know, when the private sector actually implements the plan, if you will, and obviously it's a long-term plan as, as our comprehensive plan amendments are. 
Uh, so you could see construction on, on a site uh, perhaps as soon as uh, late 2020, um, depending on a number of factors. Um, so that concludes the presentation. I'd be happy to address your questions. Okay, thank you. Our, what questions do we have for staff? Yes, ma'am, Ms. Friedrichs. So you used a number of terms. Thank you, for, by the way, for this. Um, I really appreciate all the work that I can tell has gone into this now that I'm... We're taking turns tearing up yes. our microphones up here. Um, but you've used a number of terms in your description that I think may not be clear to people in the audience, especially if they're just uh, casual watchers. Um, you did explain finally that adaptive means encouraging redevelopment. Is that what adaptive means? And adaptive, you've used it in several different places. It says um, adaptive but not incentivizes. So it's adapting, it's, it's, it means that people could, or developers could go into that area um, and there'd be more flexibility, but they're not in, being incentivized to. Yeah, do just so. in that particular tier. So tier three. You know, maybe that wasn't the best choice of words, but uh, we were trying to encapsulate in just a few words what that tier involves. So you know, adaptive is is more the broad situation, if you will, across the corridor, and then the tier. We're getting into the specifics, and. In, in that particular tier, for instance, tier one, uh, although the the plan amendment, you know, would change that to adaptive throughout the corridor, uh, tier one is not particularly, um, you know, compared to the others, it, it's not incentivizing redevelopment to any high degree. Okay. So, um, and then, uh, again, you... You mentioned several times the gateway concept, and I, I don't know that that we really understand what the gateway concept is. Well, I think the gateway concept is um, the fact that this corridor, um, if you look on the map, um, it abuts the southern boundary of the town with uh, just unincorporated Fairfax County. And so as you come off the toll road, for instance, um, and we're proceeding northbound on Eldon Street, you could think of that as a gateway to the town. You don't see any giant gateway there at the current time, but you know this is, is a gateway to the town, just as uh, Sterling Road or Drainsville Road or East Spring Street is, is a gateway. Uh, and but so it's a very mean? general concept. There's nothing, nothing magical about it. So when you, is this on? So when you say something is a gateway concept, you're just saying that it's the entrance to the town. You're not saying specifically that there's. Well, we're saying encourage a, a, a high quality uh, gateway into the town. That's that's the, the the redevelopment sort of, you know. Okay, and and what does that mean? Um, I'll try to express it in words. The, the concept is that at those parcels, the, the tier four parcels that you see highlighted in red around the intersection of the Herndon Parkway and Eldon Street, as well as the um, Eldon Street Marketplace, as you arrive on Eldon Street, you're coming up Eldon Street, that intersection um, of Herndon Parkway and Eldon Street is really, when you think about it, such a key intersection on the south side of our town because you've got our Herndon Parkway, it's a very special feature and also a very important transportation feature which allows traffic to go around and not always through the town as so well. So it's as the first thing that people are going to see when they come into a very important intersection, but what do we want the gateway to be? Well, the concept here is we're allowing additional density so that what you would be seeing there is, um, to go back to the idea of incentivize, a revitalized area, hopefully a redeveloped area that holds that higher density that hopefully will be um, new retail. Um, as you know, some of the retail is doing very well, but you know, we've had some loss of retail 
um, and changes in our retail as those, some of those buildings age. And so the, the concept is to encourage redevelopment, to create actually with that density perhaps more of a, a, of a skyline as you can imagine, slightly taller buildings, and the heights of those buildings, the forms of those buildings, that's all covered in the zoning. But really the, the idea is to have a concentration at that location that presents a, um, a um, both a, a, it's a visual and mental sense of arrival. Okay. And do we do that with all the gateways to the town? Is that Some that are more appropriate than others. I mean, clearly, if you're looking at a gateway that's coming into a more residential area, you do it with the signs that we have out there. You don't, you, you maybe some flowers and all, you don't try to, to scream it, maybe. Right. But here, where we're coming off the toll road, um, close to two metro areas where we may be having traffic added or additional people <coughs> transit, bus transit, all people coming into the town in this key commercial corridor, our historical um, retail um, corridor, there you, you want to kind of step up your game and okay. make that louder announcement. The, the last question I have, which should be pretty quick, is the... Um, on the uh, slide 18, it says future steps to implementation. Um, is that intended for developers or for um, the town council or planning commission? These are, these are steps that a developer would take in order to get to their final, <clears throat> their clo I mean, what I'm saying is whose implementation? The staff would be drafting the zoning text amendments. Um, we would be developing that so that the planning commission and the town council and the staff would be working together to develop those zoning districts in a manner that the community thinks is appropriate to enact this plan amendment. So that's where in the zoning, that's where you start talking about um, building heights, about uh, information regarding density, uses allowed, um, and we'd probably incorporate some form-based code. So you, you'd be learning your setbacks, um, looking at how the actual physical development would be. That is in your zoning ordinance, and so the town would be drafting those ordinances. They would then be at the town council for initiation, then planning commission for review at public hearing, and then town council for review and adoption at public hearing. Now, the submission of an of applicant initiated zoning map amendment, that's where the private sector comes in. Okay, that was um, what I was confused about. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, other questions for staff? Uh, Ms. Olin. Mr. DeCall. Thank you. Uh, great presentation, by the way. And I know it's a, it's a very high level and initial draft, and I know we will go to the nitty and gritty later, right? Uh, however, I do have a few comments, uh, may not be necessarily questions, but comments on that. So uh, this, this is a time for questions, okay. and then once there's a motion on the floor, All we right, can sure. make comments. All right, then we'll Thank go you. to the comments. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Olam, yes. So I just want to make sure, because I have gotten a lot of questions about this, and we talked about it in the work session, <clears> so I know I'm repeating myself, but some other folks may not have been there. So. I'm comparing this as to how we worked on the downtown for years. I've lived here for a while, so I've seen uh, developers come in and try to get something through year after year after year, decade after decade. However, when we came up with the form-based code, we gave the developers something to aim for, and they could decide, is this what, what the end result is going to be? That as you're working on these future steps, that we're going to come up with something similar so that it's not just going to be we're going to tell people to show up at your doorstep with some plan and then they have to hope it makes it through. I mean, I would say that's exactly right. I mean, it's, it's, that's the approach is to, uh, you know, to be able to put in place the, 
you know, the specifics uh, in terms of zoning and so forth that really uh, allow that plan to be implemented, that allow the developer to come in, uh, you know, develop those concepts in accord with the plan and, and have sort of the, the pathway clear, if you will. The steps are clear um, and, and the pathway is clear and there's some flexibility in there, but there's also the guidance, you know, that's quite clear. So that's, that's the approach. So the community will also have an opportunity to have input on that as it comes forward as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Um, other questions for staff? No. Um, yes. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sorry. You got um, a flail. Go ahead. No, no absolutely. Um, thank you again for the information. Just so I'm clear, and apologize for meeting me not uh, being at the work session last week. Have you worked with or gotten input from any of the development community or the investors on the current plan? Sure. Uh, so yes, we, we've, um, what we did is initially we reached out uh, before we really got uh, into the planning commission meetings and the, and the town council meetings. Back at the very early stages, we, we reached out and we brought in each and every one of the owners that would come in and talk to us to find out, you know, what their interests were, what their plans were, what they they had visions of the future of this quarter, how they thought it should change, all those types of things. So we did that. Uh, and then we continued to reach out um, at a number of points. Um, we did some special mailings. Um, there's been quite an intensive process over many months. Um, most recently, we, we did convene once again on February 1st. We invited uh, through, through the, um, let's see, the uh, business, uh, the economic development manager uh, uh, sort of uh, spurred this with um, some owners that were interested in, you know, sort of, uh, checking back and, and getting a briefing on the plan. So we had, we had a meeting right here. Uh, it was Friday, February 1st, and we had a good good attendance uh, as well with that. Thank you for that. Uh, and having said that, what was their feedback on items like on the goals? Like when I read, you know, provide and protect a diversity of housing types and costs, as a developer investor, I think I want some metric or something that can be measured, is is that something they're comfortable with? These, um, goal, these goals it's... are great, but I mean, uh, I as an investor, I want some stability. I, I, I want to know what I'm going to be targeted with. Yeah, I know, well, you might have a feel for it. I mean, I know we had we have a lot of specificity in the plan in terms of the density. I mean, we really have the framework and the structure to, to write the the ordinances that would implement this plan. Um, so I think that's generally what they're looking for. Uh, would you add? I would say the there was a very broad, um, there were broad differences when we first spoke to the commercial property owners. Um, some of them had interest in in the concept of doing some type of a plan amendment, honestly, some of the property owners just weren't interested in really following the, the process, but others were engaged. A couple of them came in a couple times to meet with us. And I think probably because they're used to different jurisdictions, comprehensive plans, um, they, they understood this as setting more of a policy and they were, I think, already, um, in some cases, looking more towards what would happen with the zoning text. Um, because it's, this is the policy, but the zoning text is what really starts to shape what they'll be able to do on their particular parcel. Um, and so some of them were looking towards that. I know we, we met with... Um, one developer, or property owner, who also happens to be a developer, they were very interested in ensuring um, ratios of retail um, to residential. Um, there was some discussion with another property owner regarding um, whether it could be horizontal versus vertical mixed use. 
and for some who might not be familiar with that, horizontal mixed use means that you would have different types of uses spread over the site, whereas the vertical means that you've got the uses on top of each other, so housing over retail. Um, they wanted to be able to um, have both, and, and we speak in the policy to um, possibility of horizontal versus vertical. So we did try to, if, if there was a particular interest, we did try to capture that in the policy. And I appreciate that. And I just um, want to communicate that as the county goes, uh, I think everyone understands there is a shortage of housing. I think the last count I heard was 30 some thousand units needed, not just, I'm not talking affordable, but within the workforce just in general. So I, I would. I would just say that this is fine. Uh, I know this is a template, a skeleton that we'll continue to put some meat on, but I certainly want that to be paramount as we uh, look at implementing this. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions for staff? Um, so I, I had a couple of questions um, that came in, it's, and you sort of segued right into it about the, the need for residential. I know there's some concern with some, some people in the community about an influx of residential and what that does to our roads and that sort of thing. And it, it has been suggested that um, we don't need additional retail or residential units because there's already enough residential in the corridor to provide a walkable customer base. D does staff agree with that assertion? Uh, I would say no. Um, you know, we really feel like, um, as Ms. Gillern referenced, you know, we're, we're seeing uh, the retail, uh, for instance, the Old Street Marketplace uh, change hands. So it's really a dynamic environment out there. And, and um, what we're seeing around the region is the retail really needs that residential to support it. It's not going to thrive, and, and the walkable uh, retail is not so much the suburban, you know, drive to your shopping center uh, of 30 years ago. And, and so, you know, I think the plan responds to, to that um, situation, you know, w with a good approach to try to uh, really activate and... Um, you know, everybody wants retail, but you, you really need that residential base to support it, I would say. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. If I can add to that, also with the metro not that far away, this is already a very active transit corridor, and that's exactly where you need to be looking at increasing your number of dwelling units. Um, we have the horizontal development, the suburban development there, and, and once you get out, a quarter mile, a half mile, most of those people don't walk to their destination. Um, some do, but a lot of people don't. And if we increase the residential along the Eldon Street corridor, you're not only providing more people with um, easy access to transit, you're providing transit that um, density that transit needs to be really successful and you're providing those stores with the people within that short distance who will really take advantage of being able to walk and take cars off the road. Thank you. That was my understanding, but I did want to clarify because it did come up. Thank you. Any other questions um, for staff before we open public comment? Okay, thank, thank you both very much. I appreciate that. Um, so once again, this is an opportunity to come forward and speak on this item. You have up to three minutes. Please state your name and address for the record, and when the red light comes on, please uh, try to wrap up. And I know we have several interested parties here. Who would like to come forward? Yes, sir. You get three whole minutes just for this. Okay. <laughs> Didn't want to shortchange you earlier. Tick, tick, tick. <laughs> again, my name is Walt Shorter from Four Seasons. Um, uh, first of all, I was very impressed with the, the work session that, uh, that I sat in on, um, the relationship that I've seen uh, specifically between what I can tell the Planning Commission and the Town Council. Um, that communication really really impressed me and gave me a lot of hope and a lot of confidence. And having conversation with Dana was uh, very important to me as well. Um, I did hear some things that I'd, um, I would like to address and, and try to at least give the opinion of the Four Seasons perspective, which is um, you talked about the vertical and horizontal. 
Um, and we talked a little bit about that, where you do a transitional from, from our property. And I have two of my board members here who literally live on that street that it affects. I wanted him here tonight because I wanted them to make sure that they understood what the process was. Um, so that, I, I appreciate the fact that during the zoning part, that's the concern I have because I want to know <laughs> what kind of shadow we're going to have on Four Seasons. Are we hiding Four Seasons and going <laughs> to surround it? Um, obviously, the traffic issue. Um, I, I kind of disagree with the pedestrian use. Giant left from my research, not because it was lack of business. It was more due to the fact that they owned the shopper's food property and they needed a larger place to, to move. That was, that was my perception. That, that was the understanding that I got talking to some uh, people in Giant. Because I was concerned that, you know, we're losing all the commercial property, what's going on. So I did a little research. I was disappointed that Baskin Robbins closed down after mm -hmm. umpteen years. That was a surprise to me a couple of weeks ago. Um, I, and I've heard, you know, talk about, and this is taken away from Four Seasons, but I've heard it talk about the bike trail, you know, the dual sidewalk bike trail. Mm -hmm. I would really like to see that not only going down Elden Street, but at least the, the commercial corridor, and let's call the residential commercial corridor, looking at that as a possibility when the development goes. And my biggest concern, as always, is the traffic. Um, we're not going to give access, and hopefully you all are not going to force access to our property for people to go down to the stoplight through our property. That's a concern I personally mm -hmm. have, because um, there's only one way out, and I didn't see the study results that we did last year. I know the builder, Brian, was here at the uh, work session, and we talked just for, for a minute or so. Um, he's optimistic that we can work around that, but everybody's going to have to make a left-hand turn. I can't see that it, people are going to be going across the median strip with all the commercial <coughs> traffic, sterling property going through there. Um, so I'd just like to uh, consider that. And I didn't know if you wanted to mention the issue about the tiering, if you want to come up and talk about that for a minute, the drainage that we were talking about. Yeah, but I think it's a history about the journey. So if, if people like to come forward and speak yeah. on that, I mean, you certainly no, have what's your time. Occurring right now, not their plan. What's occurring right now? So they have an understanding. I'm going to go ahead, my three minutes up. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to share with them. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Is there anyone else who would like to come forward? Yes, sir. State your name and address for the record, please. Okay, my name is Sayam Rijal. And uh, I'm next to the homeowner about the, they see the plan in there, the first one, 1101 automatic code. And uh, actually, we get, the, we get the information, all of them, I am a HOA member also. And um, we go, we, I, I didn't see the plan very well. And uh, first thing, there is a labeling, like a, all the water is now is coming from the, where is their plan is, coming from the, like our side. So basically, how do they are labeling the from that property to the mm -hmm. our four season property? Because if they are not make a drain or drainage from their side, all the our side property back back side of the property is a flow through the water. Right. So the, the drainage and all of that plan would be part of the of the zoning and the site plans, and that will certainly be addressed. Okay, yeah, that is a question, but I didn't see that one. I didn't see it, so that the, that is a, my main concern is that if the mm -hmm. if the when the planning is a not like a specifically specifically consider about the draining system or also sewage system, like there's a sewage system or the capacity of the sewage system. If we are studying that and the, the, all the water is uh, specifically uh, drained from the, their private property to the soil system mm -hmm. or drain it somewhere else, then our property, like HOA property, doesn't affect it. Otherwise, there is a whole property is a flow of the water. Exactly. All right. Certainly, that will be addressed in the future planning stages of this. Um, and I'm sorry, did we get your um, address for the record? Did I miss that? 1101 Autumn Hayes Court. Okay, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, is there anyone else who would like to come forward and speak on this item? Yes, sir. Please state your name and address for the record. Hi, yes. Uh, Hi. My name is Noe Flores, uh, born and raised in Herndon. Um, Hometown. Proudly boy. so. Class <laughs> 07, Herndon Hornets. Um, 
So, yeah, I live and um, I actually own the property, uh, 1107 Autumn Hayes Court, that uh, is completely adjacent to this, um, uh, to the tier two, I guess, that is mm -hmm. now going to be defined. Uh, so, yeah, super exciting to see the development uh, along with the, uh, uh, the future ideas for the uh, business park that's adjacent to, uh, to our property. Um, I would just like to have some, some questions, and I think Walter touched on them as well. Um, by the way, I'm vice president of, of um, the HOA at uh, Four Seasons um, Townhouse. Uh, and that is just, I, know, I noticed that it's, it's two over two, which means that it's a total of four levels in these townhouse units, or these townhouses will be four, four levels high. But that doesn't really state what, this, what the building cap is as far as height of, I mean, the levels can be nine feet or they could be 10, 13 feet. It doesn't really state exactly the cap. So if you could elaborate a little bit on that or maybe I just missed it somewhere. Um, another thing as well is um, it's, it's there, the development that's occurring, it would be really nice to see, you mentioned in your presentation that there's sustainability factor involved with that. So getting an idea as to what makes the land use more sustainable now under the, the proposed plan in the presentation um, than it currently is or it could be used. Um, so highlighting some of the sustainability features, I'm guessing that includes community connectivity and um, you know, uh, green space, um, things of that nature would be really interesting to, to see as well as a resident. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, who else would like to come forward and speak on this item? Yes, sir. Good evening, Mayor Lisa and members of the Town Council. <clears throat> My name is Jay Hadlock. I reside at 515 Alabama Drive here in the town of Herndon. I'm here tonight to comment on Resolution 19G-22. This is to consider adoption of the Com Comprehensive Plan Amendment 1801, the South Eldon area. I attended a number of the work sessions and public hearings held by the Planning Commission on this CPA, and during this time, the plan evolved into its current state. I live near the plan area. <clears throat> the South Eldon area is, seemingly, is a seemingly vibrant part of Herndon. <clears throat> There's a mix of retail, restaurant, some commercial, and what is considered affordable housing. The latter is represented by two large apartment complexes. The plan is bordered by existing commercial property, residential housing, Herndon Middle School grounds, and a Fairfax County Park. There's at least one large 8-point-acre plus or minus parcel that is tier two. And this parcel has already attracted developer interest. The development of the five-tier plan is a way to suggest what might be appropriate, includes what might be appropriate for that particular tier. I did notice in the slide presentation that tier four does not mention the existing multi-building apartment complex which is across Eldon Street from what used to be Eldon Street Marketplace. Affordable housing is a laudable goal for Herndon and is mentioned in the South Area Plan. What's affordable could have different meanings to different people. <clears throat> a definition used by some is spending no more than 30% of your income on housing. This goal should not be confined to just the South Eldon area. I would suggest a town could add an affordable dwelling unit program and workforce development, workforce dwelling unit policy as part of the town zoning ordinance. Fairfax County includes these in the county zoning ordinance at section 2-800 for affordable dwelling and section 2-1100 for workforce dwelling. In connection with the South Eldon plan, a transportation plan is also being developed. This would address driving, walking, and biking in the area. I realize this is a beginning for the South Eldon area and additional steps are planned. I support 19G, 19G22, and I, I will be interested in hearing what the council has to say about it. <clears throat> I'm going to submit my written remarks for the record, but I also did have a comment, Madam Mayor. You talked about residents being concerned about too many more people coming in. <clears throat> I subscribe to Reston Now, which talks about Reston and includes articles on Herndon. 
And already there's a current Reston project that's near the Reston International Center where the developer is already asking for reduction in retail and increase in residential. Yeah. So the comment about a mix of residential need, provisions, and retail, that's a balance that needs to be struck. Certainly. Or you're going to have one, one business after another fail and have empty storefronts. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your comments. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward and speak on this item? Anyone else? Okay, I will close the public hearing and move to council level for discussion and action. Mr. DeCall, I'll entertain a motion. Ma yeah. Madam Mayor, I'll move on resolution 19-G-22. Second. Okay, uh, we have a motion um, to approve made by Mr. McKenna and seconded by the Vice Mayor. Discussion on the motion, Mr. McKenna. Yes, I, I want to thank, first of all, everyone who wrote in, everyone who spoke this evening. Um, this has been fantastic, and it's uh, definitely something that um, has been studied for for a long time. I can tell you that one of the first things that was actually looked upon when Signe and I came on council was this was this South mm -hmm. Eldon Street look at, or this uh, micro look in regards to uh, what's going on. Um, some of the things that weren't uh, mentioned by staff, but I think is important for context is methodology and understanding how we came to or this um, framework came to be. And that's all this is, by the way. This is not, um, you know, putting up buildings, and everything else. It's just putting a framework in place so that we have, you know, again, I talk about 4.2 square miles, endless possibilities. What are the possibilities we can do with this? Um, and it's important that we right size this and make this correct because if we take wrong steps, you can see time after time where things have gone wrong because people have overstepped. I mean, you can look at the mall development of the 70s and 80s as an example. Um, there's a guy who has a YouTube channel. It's called Retail Archaeology. And one of the places he looked up was the Landmark Mall because yeah. it was poorly done and it wasn't refreshed and it's dead. Um, but this particular situation, not only was it looked at by uh, experts, but there was also some of the joint sessions that we had in 2000. Um, 18 uh, included a, a person who did projections, 20-year um, projections, looking out over a period of time. And this is important because everything has shifted. I mean, if you, you know, when I first moved into the area in 2002 versus now, um, the population has grown exponentially. Um, the other thing we have to worry about, too, is in 2002, it was a lot um, it was a lot more affordable. Um, so affordable housing is an important component. And again, this framework does help because when you increase the FAR, it does help in regards to uh, things like affordable housing. And uh, Mr. Hadlock, you're absolutely right in regards to what has to be done. And we have to right size this. And some of the initiatives that the county has taken, uh, including senior housing over uh, in McLean, and some other things are uh, positive steps in that because we can't forget or have people forced out because of age in place housing is not available, workforce housing is not available. All these things matter. Um, and this framework gives us the ability to um, make sure we're doing the right thing and more importantly, move the town forward so we have a vibrant community and everyone can stay here and we can be a hometown for everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, did you want to speak now or in? in to yeah, wrap it up, it's whatever you would yeah, like. Okay, that's certainly. Right. Mr. DeCall, did you have comments for us? All right, yeah. uh, finally. <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, first of all, I'd like to thank you uh, for this presentation. I know it is very high level and in initial phase, and it's a draft version, and definitely we will work on the nitty gritty in later, later times. A um, few things uh, I wanted to point out here is uh, I really appreciate the way uh, we have built uh, this uh, strategy with mixed business and residential because uh, that way, you know, we, if and when, you know, the financial, you know, uh, downturn happens, we will be not that much impacted in terms of, you know, tax collections and everything because we are building a mixed use business and residential. That's a pretty smart idea. Um, Another thing is uh, we are in a situation where we have to balance two things right now. We are proud of, you know, having Herndon as a small town. 
So we are in a continuous pressure to actually keep or maintain the flavor of small town. But at the same time, uh, we have to be ready with the increasing demand of people moving in and residential need and business need and everything, and we have to be ready with that. So it's it's very uh, a situation where we have to balance those two things out, and uh, you know, with this uh, mixed use, I believe we will be able to balance those two needs, um, and um, that's another good thing. And um, one comment or suggestion is I hope this uh, obviously we will have more discussions in future um, this development plan is more adaptive incremental and need based because if we just keep on doing a big bang then obviously what if we don't like the outcome what if the stakeholder doesn't like the last uh, you know whatever uh, uh, buildings we are uh, making it ready, and uh, we just say, "Oh, this is not what we wanted," you know. But uh, that happens, so we don't want to go to that situation. So I hope, and I'm sure, we will make it more adaptive, incremental, and need-based. Uh, that's all I wanted to share. Thanks. Thank you so much. Other uh, comments from council, okay. uh, Ms. Baker. Sure, I'll just add. Um, you know, this I think we've, we've stated this, but this has been a long time coming, right? So this was first introduced in June of 2017. So it's, it was 18 months ago that this was first discussed. Um, lots of public input between then and now, and of course, um, that will continue. Um, there was five planning commission meetings, which of course had public input. Um, and really, I think the, the business of government, this is a really important part of the business of government, right? Planning and infrastructure and um, laying out our communities in what we, what is the, you know, I'll say best way possible, or at least sets up a framework and an outline, which is again, essentially what this is, that, that tells businesses um, and developers we're, we're open, we're ready um, to, to really look at this, this section of our town and um, how we can continue to improve it and, and make it better for our residents and our businesses. So thank you to staff. Thank you for um, folks who coming today, particularly from Four Seasons, to give us your input and, and continuously do that, and um, particularly tonight as we um, review the final details on the plan. Thanks. Thank you. Other discussion? Mr. Hello. Delagula followed by Ms. Friedrichs. Thank you. And um, I'll just remind everyone because I've read a few emails and this is still a draft template skeleton that we're going to be adding to. And this is a public hearing. This is where we hear from the public. So please keep those calls and emails and suggestions coming. The worst thing we can do is make decisions within an echo chamber within a bubble. So again, please keep those comments coming. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Friedrichs. Um, I uh, echo what all of my colleagues have said. Our staff is talented and knows what they're doing. Um, our residents are becoming more and more um, willing to give us input, which we deeply appreciate. When I moved to this town in um, 1996, it was the least uh, costly part of Fairfax County to live in, and that has changed quite a bit. And um, in knocking on people's doors, I've become very aware of the anxiety that some people are um, experiencing at the thought of property values going up, while other people are saying, oh, thank goodness our property values are going up. So there's a fine balance, as, as many of my colleagues have already said, between improving our infrastructure, making sure that we're in a nice environment, but also making sure that everybody can be in this nice environment as much as possible. So um, I appreciate the work that our staff has been doing, despite my intensive questioning, and um, I support this. Thank you. And finally, Madam Vice Mayor. Yes. Um, <clears throat> thank everyone. Thank everyone for their comments and staff for all your hard work. Uh, it is kind of a fine line, and with some of the very, very small areas there on Eldon Street, whether or not anyone's going to redevelop those is <clears throat> not going to be very easy, but when you do have a uh, some of the larger parcels, we want to make sure 
it's going to be the best thing for the town. Um, with the giant leaving, that's kind of been scary. It's been a, a shopping area that I've used for years, and I've seen several stores move out of there. I'm sure when the giant moved, that's kind of a, a draw for some of the other small ones. Maybe that's why they moved. I don't, I don't know why the ice cream shop place left, the Baskin and Robbins. Um, I was a fan of that. Wasn't for years when my kids were smaller, we were <laughs> always going to Baskin and Robbins. Um, but I look forward to seeing the final plans come in. I don't see anything being built next week. I do know that the one place on the Herndon Parkway, the people that own the business park that abuts Four Seasons, I know they've been talking about they want to do something else there for years. So they want to make sure if they're investing um their finances, that it, it's something that is a good thing for them, their business owners. But we also, I lived in Four Seasons uh, when I first moved to town. My son has a townhouse there, knows some of you. And uh, he grew up here, went to Herndon High, both of my boys did. But we want to make sure that um, <coughs> the place is stable, that you can't just build something. And if it doesn't work, then we've got an empty building. Thank goodness the H Mart moved in, and it's a really nice shopping shopping market. I think I'll enjoy going to that. So I definitely will support this and look forward to seeing the additional plans coming forward. Thank you. Um, I, I agree with my colleagues. I just wanted to uh, point out a little bit about process, and um, especially the, the people who have come from Four Seasons. Your concerns about drainage and height restrictions and all of those things are very important to us and they will be addressed in as we move forward these steps here on the slide that is um, that has been left up here um, this is a long process to get us here um, we went through the same process that we'll go through for each of these steps so the next thing that will happen is we will have a correct me if I'm wrong Ms. Gilliron but we will have a zoning ordinance text amendment which is an initiating resolution where the council says um, hey, Planning Commission, we want you to look at these specific items, which would be the zoning language that address a lot of the things that you're concerned about. Then it will go to the Planning Commission for a series of public hearings, more, more than likely not just one, and then they will make recommendations just like they did on this, and it will come to us and there will be more public hearings. So I love that you're already engaged because a lot of times we don't hear from, uh, from concerned citizens until the next stage of this. So the fact that you're already engaged, I am really excited and we look forward to hearing a lot from you on this. And um, our doors are open, we wanna hear from you. Um, I was thrilled when I looked out and saw so many people here tonight. So this is gonna be exciting. Um, it's a, it's gonna be a change, but I think that if we thoughtfully plan for it and we are listening to um, input from experts and from people who live here that we can strike a good balance. So please stay in touch. Um, and with that, I will call the question, if there's no further comment, which was made by Mr. McKinnon, seconded by the Vice Mayor. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? And that motion carries. So we'll see you next time. Thank you. Um, finally, our, our last public hearing tonight is Resolution 19G23 to solicit public comment for consideration during the development of the town manager's proposed budget for the fiscal year 2020. Um, I'll open the public hearing. Um, we have received some ca uh, comments already which have been in, um, put it into the record and I will um, call on the town manager to outline the process and what this resolution or this uh, resolution actually means. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this is the time every year we, we, uh, we are in the process of putting together next year's budget. Uh, it is at a staff level right now as we're starting to crunch those things. And we, want, when we a few years ago, offered an opportunity up in February for, for citizens to come before this body, state what's on their minds regarding the budget so that we can potentially you know, support those things in, in the budget development process as we move forward. Um, it seems... It, this, to me, seemed to always be very important because once you get to the public hearings, you already have a draft document in front of you. It's a balanced draft document that you have. And any input we can get earlier in the process to try to incorporate those needs and wants and desires into the document is greatly appreciated by staff. So we offer this opportunity up. The resolution is nothing more than acknowledging that we are constantly seeking input. And please feel free to... as, as uh, was discussed earlier, send your emails, send anything in, talk to us, engage the process. Um, we, we take all that into consideration moving forward. So this is the first step in that uh, effort. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Ashton? Questions? 
Okay, thank you, sir. Um, so uh, this is a public hearing. Um, this is the official call to action on the budget. Uh, is there anyone that would like to come forward and speak tonight um, on the budget? Um, you have the same rules as before, up to three minutes. State your name and address for the record. Would anyone like to come forward at this time? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Move to council level for discussion and action. Madam Mayor, I'll move 19-G-23. That was, okay. Uh, we have a motion to approve made by Mr. McKenna, seconded by Ms. Friedrichs. Discussion on the motion. Kickoff is here. Um, <laughs> get us all the information you want, you know, everything you want about the budget. Send us emails, call us, you know, let us know. We're here. Thanks. Other comments? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yep, we're in the process of meeting with the town manager and department heads right now. So they, they meet with each of the council members individually or in, in meetings of two. Um, so that is happening within the next week or two. Um, so we are, we are in it, right? And there's lots of discussion between, there's certainly time for more discussion and input from you, but just know that um, this is already very top of mind for certainly the town manager, the uh, Director of Finance has a lot of involvement in this, and of course, all the council members. So, let us know. Right, thank you. Other question, or I'm sorry, other comments from council on this item? Ms. Vice Mayor. Yes. Um, we've already been getting comments from folks. Uh, I mentioned that we had gotten a comment from some of our nonprofits. We got one nonprofit didn't want money for their group, but they wanted to make sure we support the Herndon High ban going on their trip. So any of these type things you're interested in, as well as do you like the level of services? Do you want us not to do your streets when it snows? Do you not want us to pick up your trash? I don't think so. So just <laughs> let us know what you want us to keep doing and uh, whether you want it done better, as the gentleman did earlier. He talked about how they want to work with the town on sidewalk snow removal. So that could mean we need to put more finances there so, so that we can get those streets cleaned. But then we'll get the cars off the road, so that would be good too. So please let us hear from you. And March 2nd is coming up. Uh, if you don't want to come speak at one of these meetings, you can always call or email us. I'm willing to meet people for coffee or a soda somewhere, and I know my colleagues are as well. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? Um, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is the beginning of call to action to hear from you on the budget. And um, if this passes tonight, which I'm feeling like it will, it does not mean that, that the discussion is closed. I will make comment um, every week during the public comments portion that it's a time to come forward and speak on the budget. So we definitely want to hear from you in any way that you would like to reach out to us. So um, with that, I will call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? That motion carries, and that brings us to the consent agenda, which is just one um, resolution appointing people to our HPRB, reappointing, actually. Second. Uh, well, you guys are getting good. Okay. So we have a motion to approve made by uh, Ms. Baker, seconded by Ms. Olam. All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed? That concludes our agenda this evening. Madam Mayor, seeing no other business, I move we adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed, we stand um, adjourned at 8.47 p.m. Thank you very much.